Hello peeps, and welcome back to Sky Factory with Friends, Episode 7. Uh, I'm on here by myself at the moment. Looks like we had another creeper incident up there, so the guys just put some cobblestone. So we got a bunch of spiders building up. We'll take care of them at some point, but right now I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, so, we are going to continue with the dark craft. Off camera, I got a ridiculous amount of roses and a ridiculous amount of paper. And a whole bunch of other stuff, but we have some more stuff to do before we're quite ready for everything. So, oh, I didn't want to dye that red. Uh, yeah, you can dye these things different colors by using dye on them, by the way. So, let's see what we can do. We still need to do an arrow, a spider eye, a spider web, which I'm not real sure how we're going to get that. And this is glass powder. And glass powder is a, is acquired in an extremely interesting manner. I'm going to actually try and show you guys on camera how it is you have to get this powder. We're going to need a safari net. And with the safari net, we're going to come back here and we're going to keep an eye on our mob trap and wait for a creeper to fall down in here. And then we're going to try and catch the creeper. all the experience. Lots of experience. Okay, there's a zombie there. Now uh, there was our creeper, but it's dead now. But we need to get our hands on a creeper, a living one. Preferably barely living one. Oh, there's the creeper, there's the creeper. Can we reach him? Can we reach him? Did we get him? I don't think we got him. Nope, we didn't get him. Oh, but he's still there. He's still there. Come here. Come here. Come here, creeper. Come here. Got him. Alright, so we have a creeper in the safari net here. We need to make ourselves a force flask, which is made with three pieces of glass and a force nugget. Well, just means we need to get some glass, which I've been cooking some up in here. So three pieces of glass and one force nugget is going to get us three force flasks, which is good stuff. We're also going to need a safe place to stand while we do this, because, well, spoiler, spoiler alert, this involves an explosion. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And that's going to wash a whole bunch of torches away, and it's going to put out the nether rack. Just made a huge mess. So I want a couple pieces of obsidian. thinking six. I probably should have done this off camera, in all honesty. There we go. Now, what we need to do is we need to let Mr. Creeper out of his cage. This sounds crazy, but he's a creeper. Uh, yeah, I can't figure out how to end that. Um, 
So what we need to do is we need to release, we need to release the creeper, see how many hearts he has, and smash him until he only has half a heart left. Hopefully, with any luck, he's going to have like one heart, and one punch in the face will do it. So let's try it. Oh, he's already got half a heart. So we just need to come back here and stand on the obsidian, get our force flask ready, and the force force flask wielding lunatic is that. If you bottle an exploding creeper in a flask, it blows up and you get glass powder. Glass powder gives force weapons the false attribute, which basically makes it so that they do not... Where did I put the rest of my, my crap? I had some force logs and everything around here. There's a bunch of stuff. There we go. And we'll get the force brought to. Alright, so we have our powder. Now how do we go about getting the cobweb? We need a slime ball to get the cobweb. Hmm. We have plenty of chew jelly. And that becomes slime balls, so this is actually easy. Where's the chew jelly? I know there's going to be some downstairs. Off camera, we set off this handy dandy item collection network down here to grab all the stuff for us. Uh, one thing that I will point out about this mob trap is that it is capturing these recovery hearts and it's sucking these into the vacuum hopper. These actually are not supposed to be able to be picked up like that. What these are supposed to do, and these magic jars also, these things are supposed to drop on the ground and they restore hearts and magic when you pick them up. They don't work very well when they're stacked, but... Alright, so, we need a couple pieces of string, that shouldn't be hard to get. We just walk over to pretty much any random thing here and we should be able to get the string. We use the chew jelly in the crafting table by itself to get a slime ball. And slime ball with four string gives us a cobweb. I keep hearing the mobs falling behind me and panicking. Okay, let's head down there. What else do we need? We need an arrow and a spider's eye. Right. Again, two very easy to get pop drops. We're actually going to grab a bit of string. Maybe a bit more string. And we need a spider eye. There's got to be one in one of these chests somewhere. You have plenty in there. Alright, so. The spider eye and the arrow can both be used on bows. So I'm going to make myself some force sticks, which I already had a few. I'm going to make myself a force bow. And we're going to put that in the enchanting table. We're going to hit that with a spider eye and an arrow. And actually, we'll hit it with the cobweb, too. Oh, no, we can't hit it with the cobweb. Uh, let's see. Can we hit it with the glass powder? Yes, we can hit it with the glass powder. Or, wait, no, we can't. Okay. Whatever. Um, while that's going, we're going to make ourselves a force shovel and a force sword. There's our force bow. Bane, bleeding one. The bane attribute causes mobs to lose their special abilities. If you shoot a creeper with it, the creeper can no longer explode, which makes it totally harmless. Um, if you shoot a spider with it, it can't climb walls anymore. If you shoot a blaze with it, it can't shoot its blaze things anymore. If you shoot a zombie with it, for some reason it turns into a baby zombie, so it actually makes them more dangerous. I don't know why, but it does. 
Uh, let's go ahead and throw some force shards in there. Uh, let's see. And next thing we need to do is the force sword with glass powder. This is going to give us a false sword. False weapons will reduce enemies to one half the hit point, but it will never kill them. So it's great if you're trying to bottle enemy mobs, because enemy mobs who are hostile can only be force bottled if they have one half a heart left. So they are great if you want to bottle mobs, but right now we don't care about that. We just want to get the shards back, and we need to enchant the shovel before we break it. Shovel plus the cobweb. Well, what do you think a cobweb, which is made of silk, does on a tool? Huh? That's right, it gives it silk touch. Now, that we're actually going to need at some point, but again, not really worried about it. We just want the shard back. And same with the bow. We just want a shard out of it. Throw the shards in there, call it good. That's going to have leveled up our force tome to level 4. At level 4, we pick up this golden power, which is basically force charcoal. This, which is a forge card for item cards, and this, and this is what I was after. It looks like this item could increase the storage capacity of a storage unit. Well, what's a storage unit? Oh, hello. Uh, do I have any torches on me? Of course not. Why would I have a torch? Oh, here. There. That should fix that for the moment. And I'll get a torch and put it out there momentarily. Actually, I'll break this one because this one isn't needed. We'll put this one out here. There we go. A storage unit is an item from Darkcraft, which is basically made from taking. Let's see, it's just a yellow storage unit, I think. Maybe it's a black storage unit, or a gray one, I don't know. Uh, yeah, gray storage unit, there you go. It's basically just a couple pieces of cobble, a couple pieces of smooth stone, you get a storage unit. So, we got plenty of cobble. We got some smooth stone that I cooked up over here, so we'll get that. Let's make ourselves a storage unit. Just like that. And if we put the storage unit down, we're going to see that it has the same internal capacity as a chest. But that thing said that you can upgrade your storage units. I wonder if you can press and hammer these off. No. Uh, let's get ourselves a force wrench. Uh, force gear. Uh, no, change my mind. We'll just get ourselves a force pickaxe, and we'll just pick the thing up with a pickaxe. We don't necessarily have to wrench the thing up. Alright, so, black storage unit. And that thing was talking about increasing the capacity, right? So, let's go ahead while I'm thinking about it, and put all of our autonomous actuators, activators, whatever they're called, back around to this thing here, and get it ready to run again. Now, when those things run, it's going to use this vacuum hopper here to suck in all of the blocks, right? Right. Well, we don't really want everything to stay in this chest, do we? No, we want to pull it out and eventually sort it. But, what if we could automate the conversion of all of this stuff here into the ores, and then break it down, and then automate the conversion of the crushed ores? Well, we can. And that's what I've been getting at in a very roundabout way. We are going to make ourselves some storage unit upgrades, which is chests, smooth stone, and four ingots. Uh, 
Oh, where'd the wood chest go? I must have moved it. Uh, there's a couple of chests. We'll probably need more than that, though. There's a bunch of them. Let's go ahead and make ourselves, I think, three of these. And we'll go ahead and make four, since I was bricking out for four anyway. We have four of them. Now let's go put the storage unit in this table. And we will add a storage unit upgrade. You can only do one at a time. That's going to bring it up to a tier two storage unit. And we can't take it any further than that right now because we just got to, the, to that tier. If I were to do the golden power and this, which is a snow cookie, but I don't think we have any snow at the moment. I haven't found a snow biome. Um, if we were to do that, then we could increase this further. But 54 slots will be enough for us for now. We're going to put this right here. On top of that, I think we're going to put another vacuum hopper. Or, no, actually we don't need a vacuum hopper on this. Something just took a pot shot at me. I think there's a spider jockey up there. Either that or a falling spider took a pot shot out the window just before he crashed to his death. That would be funny. I would laugh. Okay, anyway. Let's put some of this stuff away. We want to keep the paper. For a reason I will be showing you momentarily. We don't need the string. Uh, we'll probably need some glass. We don't need the force flasks right now. What we are going to need is a few item transfer nodes, but we'll get to that in a second, because we also need a couple more autonomous actuators. So, we need tin, pistons, chests, and pneumatic servos. We need some iron. Well, we got some. Also need some wood, which I don't have any on me, but force wood does work. Probably should not have done that with all of the force planks, but we're going to grow some more trees anyway. And some redstone. We're going to need some lapis sooner or later. There's our redstone to get our piston. There's two autonomous actuators, or two pneumatic servos, rather. And we have the chest, so we just need a few pieces of tin. And autonomous actuators get. First autonomous activator, we're going to put, actually I don't want this force chest right here. I want it <coughs> one more block away. First actuator, we're going to put there. Second actuator, hmm. Now I know what I need to do. What I need to do is I need to replace this chest here with this. That's what I need to do. So, we're going to set the rest of this up and then we'll come back to it. Autonomous actuators there. Okay? We are going to need an item transfer node, which I don't think we have any more up here, but we have two on the cobble gen down here, and we don't really need two running this cobble gen, so I'm just going to take one. And we're going to put the transfer node on this chest. However, we don't want it to be yanking everything out of the chest. We want to control what gets pulled out of that chest, right? So we need to put some item filters in here to tell it what it's allowed to take. Item filters are easy. Sticks, string, redstone. Well, string is definitely not a problem inventory space for me right now is. Uh, sticks, there we go. And redstone we have. So let's go ahead and make... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I need a few more sticks. Up in there. There we go. And a redstone. And string. Gonna get us four item filters. Now I need to clean my inventory out a little bit because I need to do some transferring of resources. But right now I'm just gonna put down a couple of chests to store my crap in. And anything that I don't need at this exact moment to get this set up, I'm gonna put away. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna put everything away except for pickaxe. The reason being, I'm about to break this. And this is going to make stuff vomit all over the place. Until we put down the storage unit. And then everything will get sucked back into the storage unit. Hold down shift and click something, it moves your entire inventory. Which is pretty awesome. Alright. Now, the transfer node here, we want it to do some very specific things, but First of all, we need to tell it what it needs to do with its contents. Remember I was talking earlier about how you can set certain recipes for... Uh, brain fart. How you can set recipes in the force pack? Well, it's not just the force pack. You can do it in here too. Storage units also work with those item cards. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to get this gravel ore, and we need to get at least one of every type of gravel ore. So, there's eight different types of gravel ore. There's gold, copper, tin, we need iron, we need lead, we need aluminum, we need nickel, and we need copper. There we go. And I think I might actually want to change these. to face inward a little more because I want it to pulverize this gravel very very close to this which means I'm going to want to move that transfer node too. Put the transfer node in the actuator. And I think we're going to put the transfer node this monitor is going to be kind of in the way I think. And then we'll have actuator number one be right here. Is that going to work? No, of course not. Nothing ever works according to plan. Come on. Okay, maybe I can actually just put this directly on the side here and have this first actuator be like right there. Let's see, if I do that, and then I put this on the side of there, is that going to connect? Well, it won't right now because this thing is set to orange. If I said it's blue, it'll connect. So, but that's okay. We're going to get the autonomous actuator out of there. We're going to put this here. Now, here's the trick. If I put this down and break it with a hammer, let's go ahead and get the copper one since we have the second copper. If I put that down and break it with a hammer, is it going to get sucked in? Yes, it will. I don't want to block its path to the vacuum hopper though, so I'm going to move this actuator over here. 
like that. And I'll just write I'll just route the item pipe over to here. All right. The next thing we need is the item filters. Item filters have an internal buffer of about this many slots. So, the first one we're going to set up for gravel. Gold, tin, copper, nickel, aluminum, lead, iron, and we're missing platinum. There we go. Platinum. There's our platinum. And we'll have to clear the other filters. If you set a filter with a stack, all of the items in the stack get the same filter. So we're going to put this filter in here. Now it will only pull out the gravel ores. We need to get a few transfer nodes. So let's get some stone. Because I don't know where the transfer nodes are and I'm lazy. So I'm just going to make a few. Need some slabs. And glass and redstone. Or is it redstone and glass? Yeah, there we go. 32 transfer pipes. And if we hook the transfer pipes up like so, There we go. Now, if we change this to blue, this should why for you not? Oh, because I have it set backwards. Derp. You need to face the direction that you want it to work. Which means this one's backwards too. There we go. <clears throat> so, this thing, once we switch this to blue, will now get automatically loaded with all of our gravels and being set to right click, it will deploy the gravels. Right? All good so far. Now, if we set this to left click and we give it a hammer, in this case, I'm going to give it a diamond hammer because I don't want to have to maintain this thing all the time. Piece of wood. Two sticks, two diamonds, gives us the diamond hammer. And if we give the diamond hammer to this actuator and tell it to use only the first slot and to left click, it's going to break that. And it's going to send all of that pulverized ore into here, which is awesome. Now, next step, we need to set a second item filter. We need to handle the crushed ores. So we need to get four iron, four nickel, Four gold, four aluminum, four lead, four platinum, four. Do we have nickel? Yes, we have nickel. Four. What am I missing? Iron, gold, lead. Platinum, nickel, aluminum, silver, or tin, copper. Oh, I'm missing silver, aren't I? Miss silver in the other one, too. So, copper and tin, wherever the tin is. There it is. So, let's go ahead and make our broken, or make our silver ore gravel. 
and we're going to pull this item filter out of here. We're going to use the item filter again so that we can reset what's in it. We're going to add the silver ore to it also. And now we're going to put that in there. And we need to empty this out because it's doing something it's not supposed to. There we go. All right. Now, second item filter. We're going to give the sands. There's eight sand, and the silver ore gravel we need to break in order to get that, so we'll just put it down there and let that get sucked in. One, two, there's the silver, there it is, three, four. There's our silver. Here we're going to clear out this item filter. And we're going to set nickel, aluminum, lead, gold, iron, tin, silver, copper. All right, there's number two. We'll put that item filter in there, and now it knows it can work with those also. So if we put these sands in here, they should get very quickly pulled out of the system and passed on. I hope. Otherwise, it's going to take another transfer node. Which, I mean, if it does, that's it's not the end of the world. Yeah, it looks like it's going to take another transfer node for that. That's okay. Like I said, not the end of the world. We'll just have to make some more transfer nodes. So we need an eye of end, uh, an ender pearl. We got no shortage of those. And an item transfer node takes a chest, a couple smooth stones, and some redstone. So easily done. Let's get a chest out of here. And we should have everything in our inventory. We need to make four of these. Okay, second transfer node on the side here. It's okay if that connects. It's not going to go in. But if it really bothers you, which, I mean, it kind of does bother me, so I'm going to fix it. You can take a wrench and right-click that, and it will tell it not to connect. Let's actually do that. If you take a wrench and right-click that, it will tell it, hey, you're not allowed to connect there. Now, this is doing something we don't want it to do. So we need to tell it, hey, you're only allowed to work with sand. So it's only allowed to pull sand. It won't pull anything else now, and now it's going to break all the sands down into powder. So stage two is done. Now we need to get one each of all of the pulverized. So, now we've got some pulverized nickel. We have some pulverized silver. Put the broken gold ore in there. We got the pulverized lead already. We need pulverized iron. Platinum. Uh, tin. Aluminum. Uh, let's see, what are we missing? Gold. And why is it not pulling the copper or sand out? Because I had the silver in here twice, that's why. And... There's our sands. We'll take that. Yeah, we just toss that. It'll get loaded into here. We'll click that, and then we'll reconnect that. And that should transfer our sand in there. There we go. 
Now we got four of that. This is going to make the dusts. Now, the dust we can't break down again. So, once we get them into dust form, that's game over for the autonomous actuator, right? So, the last item filter we're going to put on here is going to be going to our pulverizer system, which means we need iron ore dust, nickel ore dust, silver, lead, platinum, tin, gold, and copper. We don't need aluminum because aluminum can't be pulverized, right? So there's no point in putting aluminum on there. And this one, we're going to put a transfer node on here, and we're going to tell this item filter, we're going to tell this thing here, you are only allowed to pull out the dusts. So any dusts that end up in this inventory We'll go to there. Right? Copper ore dust, good to go. The last one is going to be for incidental things that gravel can produce, like diamonds, emeralds. Yeah, all of that stuff. We're going to put one more transfer node on here, and we're going to put an item filter on there and tell it it can pull that, and then we're going to have that put it in a separate chest so it's not clogging this up. Why are we going to all that trouble? Because I'm about to do the meat and potatoes of this entire build. What happens if we get an item card? And we take ourselves four pieces of iron ore, these four crushed iron ore, or no we won't even do the crushed iron ore because we don't really have much of that right now. We'll do the broken tin ore. Take four broken tin ore, we clear this out, by right-clicking everything. And we tell this, if you do this, you are going to get tin or gravel. And then we put this in here. Well, it's going to transfer all of that into tin or gravel. It's going to send all of that tin or gravel over there. It's going to get broken up, and it's going to get tossed into this vacuum hopper. Let's make another item card. Matter of fact, let's set up the groundwork to make a ton of item cards. Let's get some wood from somewhere. Wish I knew where they moved the wood. Now ah, there's some in here, that'll work. Let's get ourselves a bunch of crafting tables. Let's go enchant another one of these item cards. Item card, crafting table, enchant. It's going to get us another one of these. Let's do it one more time. There we go. We're going to come over here, we're going to right click on, or we're going to get a couple of pieces of the pulverized tin ore out of here, the crushed tin ore. We're also going to need four of the pulverized tin ore, but we don't have enough of that at the moment. So, we're going to take one of these crafting cards, we're going to tell it, hey, four crushed tin ore is going to give you tin ore sand. Put that in there. Now it knows how to make tin or sand. Look at that. Now we're getting pulverized tin. Take another item card. For this becomes this. Put him in there too. Now you can see what's going on. And that's going to make 
a whole ton of this tin ore dust, which we can then run through our pulverizer and get that emptied out for us. So what we need to do is we need to put one card in there for each one of those steps. There are nine different types of ores. We need three cards for each ore, which means we need 27 cards total. It's not going to leave a whole lot of space for extra stuff, right? That's why we need to pull the other stuff out of there. That's also why we're going to want to upgrade that storage unit again as soon as we possibly can, which is going to require me to do a little more of the enchanting on here. But I didn't want to, you know, find a snow biome to get a cookie. And I don't know if there's another easy way to get snowballs other than, well, force freezing a slime ball, but that requires you to have it. Uh, water and air essence, I guess, gives you snowballs, so that might be a way to go. I'm not going to be able to get blizzes, so, yeah. Anyway, so what I'm going to do between this episode and the next is I'm going to go through and I'm going to make item cards, crafting cards, for each one of our ores and load them into here. I'm also going to set up an automatic pulverizer that's going to pull all of our sand out of here and feed it into a pulverizer for us, which means I'm going to need to run a power line somewhere. And then from there we'll have it automatically feed into some sort of furnace to cook it up, and then we'll have that automatically send it into storage for us. So, we now basically have a way that we can just take a whole bunch of gravel, throw it in one of these autonomous activators, and it'll automatically process it all into bars for us at the maximum ratio. All because Darkcraft rocks. Yep. So, I am running about 42 minutes, and I have to get this rendering before I go to bed tonight, so I'm going to have to wrap it up here. This has been Night Dagger with Episode 7 of Let's Play Sky Factory with Friends, although I'm on by myself right now. It's still with friends. Who cares? Um, yeah, I'll probably be back tomorrow with another episode. Catch you later, peeps.